Hi everyone. I welcome you all in tutorial 6 of my ETAP software training series. In my last tutorial, I explained how to assign seismic loads using various building codes. Specifically, we focused on assigning seismic loads using ASC 716, UBC 1997, Indian standards and building codes of Pakistan seismic provisions. If you haven't watched my previous tutorials, don't worry, I will paste a link in video description so you can access to my previous tutorials. If you are new to my channel, please subscribe to it and press the bell icon so you can be notified on my next uploads. In this tutorial, I will discuss how to assign wind loads onto your structure according to the building codes. So first, understand how wind pours ache on a structure through a diagram. As you can see from this diagram, wind coming from left hand side will create a pressure on the left hand side wall and will create a suction on right hand side of a wall. This is this side of wall is known as windward direction and this is known as leeward direction. So in E tabs you can apply wind loads in two different ways. First is exposure from extensive diaphragms and the second is manually applying the wind pressure coefficients on the walls. For that you have to draw the walls. So first we will discuss what are the diaphragms, how to define them and then we will talk about wind load patterns and discuss each terminology associated with that. To define the diaphragm, go to define menu, click the diaphragm, click modify show diaphragm option. So, so here you can see two different options, rigid diaphragm and semi-rigid diaphragms. So for rigid diaphragms, you have infinite in-plane stiffness and it does not exhibit any membrane deformation and for semi-rigid diaphragm it simulates actual stiffness properties and behavior basically in both cases the loads will be distributed differently now the question is when to choose rigid and when to choose semi-rigid in this situation you have to refer a code book from the code book as it is written for analysis under wind loads diaphragm constructed of untopped steel decks concrete filled steel decks and concrete slabs each having a span to depth ratio of 2 or less shall be permitted to be idolized as rigid. Diaphragms con constructed of wood structural panels are permitted to be idolized as flexible. For our case we will select rigid diaphragm. Now we have to assign the diaphragm. So for this case you have to go to the assign menu. First you have to go to the select and then select object type. From here you have to select floors. Then click select. Close. Now to the 3D menu. Now go to assign menu. Shell. From shell you have to look for diaphragms. Click D on the diaphragm we have just assigned, then click apply, then OK. So now you can see here on the screen a kind of spider web image assigned to the floors. So basically they represent the diaphragm. So in order to define the wind load pattern, go to the define menu, select load pattern. So first I will discuss AACE. 716 code how the wind load pattern are defined using American code so right wind from x direction so we have to define wind load pattern in both the direction select the type of load which is wind and from auto lateral load drop down list select the code so for our case as I am going to as I am going to select ASC E716 adds new then similarly in wire direction you have to do the same click OK now go to the now select X direction 
go to modify lateral load so in this dialog box you will see lots of parameters are written so i will explain one by one in detail so as i ex so as i discussed earlier there are two ways to define the wind load parameters number one is exposures from extents or diaphragms and exposures from frame shale objects i will discuss this so first we will focus on this uh, method which is exposure from extents of diaphragm so in this method we have to assign a diaphragm so what does it mean all our wind load will act on the center of the uh, mass of this structure so after that you have to select wind pressure coefficients so either you choose program determined or you choose user specified if you choose user specified you have to put these coefficients from the codes so windward coefficient which is cpw and leeward coefficient which is cpl now wind coefficients let's me define these one by one so wind speed is the rate at which the wind is moving in a particular area you can get this value from wind diagram of the con different countries if you are exposure type then we have another option which is exposure type so there are three exposure type uh, mentioned in american standards which is b c and d so i will explain to you one by one from the figures so exposure type b means a suburb residential area where mostly you will see single family dwellings or low rise structures i can also explain to you from another figure which is also exposure type b so this is an urban area with numerous closely spaced obstructions having the size of single family dwellings so these types of areas are known as exposure b type of area or you can also differentiate uh, exposure b from other two categories which is structures in the foreground are located in exposure b so structures in the center top of the photograph adjacent to the clearing to the left which is greater than approximately 656 feet in length so these kinds of areas is shown in these three figures are referred as exposure b similarly exposure c type that means flat open grassland with scattered obstructions having heights less than 30 feet or 9.1 meter another picture for exposure c c open terrain with scattered ob obstructions is referred and height of the building is generally taken as less than 30 feet now we will look to the exposure type d so the areas or the buildings located near to the sea shore or near to the sea shore lines they are referred as uh, exposure d because they will experience heavy winds due to they're facing towards the seaside from there you will choose what kind of exposure type your building is going to face so for example i'm choosing exposure type b now then you have to look for ground elevation factor so the ground elevation factor is the ratio of air pressure and density at elevation related to the standard values mean sea level with constant temperature so this level this elevation is determined with various formulas but but if you refer to the code book so this is but if you refer to the code book it says the ground elevation factor to adjust for air density ke shall be determined in accordance with table 2 26.9-1 it is permitted to take ke for all the elevation for all the elevation you can take this value or you can refer to this table in order to find the ground elevation factor now we will see topographical factor so topographical factor it means your structure is located in hilly areas or in plain areas so again the code is specified if site conditions and location of buildings and other structures do not meet all conditions specified in section then k taken as 1.0 then we will discuss gust factor 
The gust factor is defined as the ratio between a peak wind gust and mean wind speed over a period of time. So by default it is taken as 0.85 for all the cases. We can also refer to table. So as it is written here, the gust factor for a rigid building or other structure is going to be taken as 0 0.85. So you will see by default it is 0.85 now directionality factor so directionality factor which accounts for the fact that the probability that the maximum wind may not impact the structural component or system in its weakest orientation and this can mitigate over conservatism by taking into account the probability that the predominant extreme wind speed up may not coincide with least favorable orientation of the structural component Again, if you refer to the code, the directional factor is written as 4.85 value, or you can also refer to this table in order to specify that this coefficient. So for buildings, it is 0 0.85, 0 0.85 in this form. Now, expose your height or building is obviously your building will face uh, wind pressure from bottom to story three. So just select base to story 3 now as we have assigned the diaphragm you can see automatically direction or the way the wind load will apply the coordinates are calculated uh, by the E tab so direction 0 means wind load in X direction so we have assigned the load in both directions so for X direction you have to write 0 here click OK so these are the so these are the centricity ratios and related with torsional cases. So in this case, you have to fill this form in order to define the wind load pattern. Similarly, you have to do, you have to change all these values in my direction as well. But you have to change the direction from this dialog box. Now put the direction as 90. So click OK. OK. Now we will move to Indian codes and see how the wind loads are applied using Indian codes. So let's begin. Go to the Indian code book. So first we have to define the load pattern according to Indian standards. So go to the define menu then click load pattern. From here you just change to IS. 875-1987 click modify similarly you have to change it in y direction 875-1987 click modify little loop similarly you can specify the wind pressure in two different ways first from exposure from extents of diaphragms and exposure from shell objects so first we will discuss the first option now wind speed so from code book you can specify the wind speed according to the area where your structure lies for example last time we discussed it where structure lies in Bombay region so so Bombay is somewhere here in purple area so for purple area the wind speed is 45 44 mph so we will type 44 mph now terrain category similarly so terrain categories with uh, specify whether your structure is, lies in three areas whether it is near to the obstruction or it lies in a a plain area so from here you will define if this criteria for the pavement of regional basic wind includes open land adjacent to the sea coast may also be classified as category 2 so for our case we will choose category 2 structure class a b or c So all general buildings and structure or structure lies in this category. So we will choose 
all general buildings so structure classes a similarly risk coefficient vector k1 so risk coefficient k vector for all other building is 1 so choose one here topographical factor a topographical factor if it is a plain area so you have to directly choose one for plain areas your uh, calculations so topography factor is one similarly windward coefficient and leeward coefficient 0.8 and 0.5 in all the cases exposure height your, your building full building will face the wind pressure so you choose base to story 3 click ok Similarly, you have to change the parameters in fire directions. So, as we are done with applying the wind loads from diaphragm X sense, now we will apply the wind loads manually. For that, you have to draw the walls around your building and then apply the wall pressure coefficients manually. So, so go to draw menu, click auto draw cladding. You have to draw the wall between the floors, so click OK. So within seconds we have drawn the walls around our building. So building now we will apply the wind load coefficients on windward side and leeward side. So let's begin. Let's apply the windward coefficient on X direction first. So to apply, first select the windward side walls then go to sign menu shell loads click wind pressure coefficients here in x direction on windward side you have to apply 0 0.80 these values are extracted from the ports so in windward direction click ok so as you can see the load is applied on this direction now leeward side so leeward side will be This is leeward side. This wall. So select the walls. Go to sign menu. Shell loads. Wind pressure coefficients. Put 0.5 on leeward side. Click OK. Similarly, you have to do the same in y direction as well. For y direction, select the walls. Go to sign menu, shell loads, wind pressure coefficients, 8 on windward side, click Y from drop down list, OK, and do the same on front walls. Go to sign menu, shell loads, wind pressure coefficients, 0.5 on the leeward side. Click OK. So in this tutorial, we learned how to assign wind loads manually and from the diaphragm extents. So guys, this brings to the end of today's tutorial. If you find this tutorial useful, please do like and share. And if you have any doubt, you can comment in comment section. For upcoming tutorial videos, please do subscribe my channel and don't forget to press the bell icon so you can be notified on my next uploads. Thank you and have a nice day.